So from your agenda, you are very clear about like today we're going to deal with the uh, introduction to CAE simulation. Uh, I have just got a question like, um, was it CAE uh, comes under uh, design or analysis department, right? So well, we'll, we'll get to know the answers in the last part. So again, this introduction is purely for the um, very uh, introductory level to the uh, to the people who, who are not, not aware of about what is uh, CAE and um, Every product uh, before it's getting uh, manufactured, there will be an uh, I mean, evaluation process where we could able to understand whether the product is going to meet that uh, requirement or not. So all the product right after uh, completing your design phase, it won't get the uh, manufactured as it is. So I'll just uh, speak with you people in between. Uh, you can uh, proceed me or answers uh, through the chat, I guess. Uh, I hope maybe like they can uh, put that uh, answers in the chat, right? Uh, they have the provision too. Was it locked? Sorry, come again. Uh, that students can able to post their answers in the chat. Can I see that as well? So, so uh, uh, students, uh, you can basically, uh, you know, either chat with me or Shakti. Be, okay. So whatever the question Shakti will be asking you, uh, you know, give the answer directly to Shakti. So you can, when you're typing your message, select the name uh, to whom you want to send that message to. So you can select the name of Shakti. Well, everyone can basically click on chat. And uh, right above the message space, there is a drop down feature with a blue, blue background. Click on that and select the name of Shaktivel there so that he will get the visibility whenever he is asking any questions. Yeah, yeah just, so yeah, just because can... I just want to make it as an uh, uh, account of uh, interactive session so then people can able to understand like whether we are in a right phase or not. So, yeah, yeah, they will be able to write it to you. Yeah. Cool then. Yeah, guys, we'll back to the topic. Uh, I have seen like uh, many of you guys are from uh, 78 percentage of people uh, out of the participant room. So I have available here are from mechanical background out of which other uh, people are uh, from the various domain. So we'll make it in a common phase. So then everyone can be able to understand uh, what is CAE, first of all, and what we used to do in the CAE. If not CAE is being there, uh, what will happen to the regular products which is coming to the market? Okay, we'll make it in a very easiest way. So end of the session, I want like uh, many of you guys uh, uh, want to get benefited uh, to know what is CAE. Like that is our, uh, my achievement. Okay, so let me share my PPTs, then we'll quickly jump into the topic. So I want to become an, a CAE engineer. What might be my prerequisites, sir? So first of all, um, we'll be giving you the content of uh, details, what we are going to cover in this topic, then we'll move on to the individual topic uh, and then we can discuss in detail about it. What is CAE also we're going to see? Uh, many, people, many people are like considering CAE and FEA both are same. That also we'll discuss and significance and scope where I could able to uh, see myself after one or two years if I'm working in the CAE department, that also we'll discuss. An application of CAE in, in various industries, it's not only for the mechanical, it is also there for the other domains as well. And uh, various types of analysis, uh, not in detail, we'll just uh, uh, like get the concept of what is linear and non-linear. Those are the like uh, top um, varieties of analysis which we need to understand before we are getting into CAE. And uh, the major important thing, meshing, as an uh, CAE engineer, the very uh, important thing as like how we are uh, learning alphabets to speak English proficiently, we need to know meshing as well. Boundary conditions, the second important thing. Um, since we are imitating the real-time scenario with the help of softwares, we need to know the boundary conditions as well. In that, constraints and loads, how we need to define that also we can discuss in detail. Finally, an end of touch, we'll be uh, giving you a software demo where you could be able to integrate the things, whatever you have learned in this webinar. And prerequisites for the CA engineer. Uh, okay, you might have an uh, end goal that after completing your BTEC, you just want to become a CA engineer. I can understand like most of the people whomsoever I come after completing your BTEC, you might not aware of uh, what is a CE, first of all. And second, uh, if you know about it also, and again, the in-depth knowledge, you won't be getting it from the existing curriculum, what we have in our uh, uh, like bachelor's degrees. So that uh, again, that has not been uh, suffice uh, for you to get into the industry. So to be frankly saying like uh, the, the content what they have uh, what we learned even like i'm from the same background right so we learned from the uh, college background is all about uh, based on marks so right after getting the marks there won't be in, uh, any clarity like where i need to work and how i'll grow i mean how i can see myself after uh, five or six years and uh, who, uh, who like what will be my future i we don't have any much clarity on that right 
so we should uh, get into know uh, in your college days itself like uh, what is your uh, strength and where you can uh, expose yourself where you can shine a better way when compared to other people there must be a unique uh, feature in all the people right so we need to figure it out uh, then we need to focus that particular part that's how uh, we supposed to mold but in reality it, it is not happening in such a way so if you are very much passionate about uh, a strength of materials or uh, engineering basics itself or i i am very much good in uh, max I, i i am loving like uh, derivations formulas 80 90 percent people uh, we won't be like liking the formulas but still uh, there's no other goes for us we need to clear the paper so we need to go for the uh, i mean mug up, mugging up the formulas but entirely different people like they will be uh, straight away knows the formulas by knowing the derivations itself so in such people in such cases um, there is an open opportunity for you to explore yourself in the way of uh, analysis where you will be um, working at, working in the background of your software development creatures and uh, those areas are uh, wide opportunities for you guys and the people who is like uh, good in uh, calculations and they want to like uh, create innovative ideas then you can straight away work on with the analysis part of your uh, structures so entire domain like it has on every um, sections where every people can easily get into that uh, zone which you which ever like you are comfortable with first we need to figure it out where we are and uh, which is our strength okay so as an uh, ca uh, engineer definitely you should have your engineering basics very strong and uh, strength of materials and fea these are four core papers along with that uh, kom dom all your dmes if you are having an allied paper of um, other things as well it will strengthen up your uh, profile okay the major requirement are uh, these three and what is fea might be in your uh, engineering uh, background you might have uh, crossed this paper but in a way of an uh, theory based okay i'll just slightly tweak it and then i'll be asking your questions so apart from finite element analysis okay so in what are the ways uh, you may think an object can be um, solved it can be in any object i'm not defining the object over here i'm just giving it to you you can take a um, bottle you can take a beam you can take any uh, automobile or not into that much complex level just very simple level if you want to solve that model which means um i don't want the model to get spoiled but i want the answers if i am putting something on the model what will happen to it let's take a stick okay and then uh, like you are bending the stick into uh, some extent up to some extent the the stick can able to hold or withstand that uh, tension whatever you are putting to it right or let me make it in a chamber just a minute we'll go for the chamber then Uh, guys were able to see my example yes yes perfect so if you are making a streak okay and if you are uh, providing a load in uh, two different opposite directions okay so at one point it's supposed to break right so without breaking this stick i just want to know by fixing the center point and if i'm providing this load and this load how i could able to know it correct shaker yeah you have messaged me di directly but still like the answer was correct it will start to rotate so how we are but uh, uh, in guest right i'm not sure about that but still people who might have uh, thinking about this thing it will rotate correct so we just uh, uh, made it in a simple way by imagining the case in his mind that if i'm having a streak and i'm put i mean fixing it in the center part i'm putting the load towards left and right in opposite directions it will start to rotate you just imagined and then you told me the answer this is for the simple model what if if i'm telling you a car is there and i'm and wall is there if i'm putting the car to the towards the wall how many parts will crush over here if i'm like asking asking this question to you will you able to say it in a proper way exactly where which part will get damaged and uh, which part will get remain the original portion after the elastic zones and all quite tedious right so all the component whatever you you guys are like dealing with so far will have its uh, own limitation up to which it could able to work and more than that it can't work it will start to show us breaking point okay so if you are taking any a practical example before it's getting manufactured there will be a evaluation phase so if i if i if i am a client i'll be going to an uh, design engineer i'm just asking an um, 
a coffee mug okay so what could be my requirement as in coffee mug it's supposed to uh, hold the coffee properly without like any wobbling over there and second thing what i would ask like i i need the material i need to choose the material of the coffee mug based on the material what i'm going to pour inside it and i'll be asking them to um make me comfort while handling that coffee mug meaning the handles of the coffee mug supposed to be in a great way that it should not get uh, get me hurt when i'm putting it more loads that's how i'll be asking certain questions to an uh, design engineer right so as a design engineer they will be like uh, making it in a uh, proper way based on your uh, requirement right after doing this how as a client will know whether this coffee mug after pouring like uh, one liters of uh, milk on it it will sustain or it will like uh, overflow or it will starts to crack client definitely don't have an idea about this particular mug will sustain for the load of 1 liters or not right so the two ways are there here is one i need to manufacture the cup with the help of an uh, manufacturing engineer and then i need to pour the milk and then i need to check whether it is breaking or it is like uh, getting out from the mug or not in another way i can simulate this thing from the cad engineer i'll be getting this cad as an soft copy then i'll be putting it in a system where it could be able to say whether this coffee mug after pouring the 1 liter of milk will sustain or not without spending any cost in the manufacturing definitely this will give me the result in a approximate manner not 100% guaranteed one but still i can rely on this data even after not manufacturing this coffee mug this is when a perfect analyst will comes to picture so where it is getting useful i am like i'm not not creating any prototype okay i'm getting the result in quicker phase and moreover i'm not spending more manpower for simple coffee mug itself we need to think this much level just imagine a car how many components are there how many members are working over there if i want to test the car for one sample test with the dummy it will take me to set up the case more than 3 months so right after testing it only i could able to say this car will be good enough to safeguard my passenger who is sitting inside the car so how tedious process it is to simulate it and to get the result in a quicker phase we have the people who is worked as a ca engineer okay now we'll come to the concept of fea where fea is pitching inside while i'm analyzing the model so now the fea part is clearly evident from that uh, definition itself finite element analysis right so the finite element analysis is nothing but cutting down a complex model into small small pieces for time being you can take it in this way for better understanding i'll make it in a more technical terminology in the last part so cutting down a complex model into small small pieces for better understanding or better solving okay so you can see the image of uh, first uh, ball image which is discretized into small small pieces the discretization is nothing but reducing the number of unknown to known so in better words uh, what i can make you can call this each piece as elements okay and the each piece will have four corners as like a square that square is having the corners the corners you can call it as a nodes okay so with that help you could able to discretize the um, undefined object to a definite amount where it's going to helpful for me it's going to helpful for me to give a boundary condition for this object which means we all know that infinite amount of points if i'm putting it in a series it will form a line right if the same line i'm putting it into multiple times it will finally will create an surface without any gap right so the origin of the surface is the dots which i made over here the same way if i'm having an uh, irregular shape of an object i want to know how it's getting solved i can't able to give this indefinite amount of no points 
to my solver. Solver is nothing but we'll take an example as a PC. Okay. My PC can't able to solve this irregular object as it is. I need to say to the PC in such a way, I discretize into small, small pieces. And then I need to give a definite amount, one, two, three, like that. I need to say how many elements, how many nodes are there to recreate this indefinite object with a definite value. To convert this indefinite to finite only, we have an help of elements and nodes. This will say exactly what is the area of it and how many people, I mean, how many nodes are being there, how many elements are being there. With that help of it, the solver could able to say me the answer, what is the object, how it's behave, if I'm putting the loads on it. Finally, the outcome, how it will react. In and out about the object, I could able to know by putting this model module for meshing purpose. Okay. So the final outcome, uh, after like a car is completely filled with mesh, we used to call this meshing. The process of splitting the each and individual elements, we used to call them discretization. Was it clear so far? Any questions? Just up to this topic, is it clear? Yes or no? Your questions, I'll take it in the last part. Just let me know, is it clear to you guys or not? Perfect. So far now we are in the part of meshing. Correct. Let me back to the topic. Thanks for your response, guys. So now I know like uh, what is meshing and uh, how an uh, prerequisite for C, uh, I mean, C engineer needs and and all. Now we'll see about the methods of engineering analysis. So every module, if you are considering, there will be a separate uh, pathway which needs to be followed to um, get a solution from it. Okay, the same example as a coffee mug. I told you in a simple words, uh, solving. Okay, but actually the solving methodology itself, it has its own track. Okay, so engineering problems all can be solved in three major uh, classifications. One can be an experimental method. Another can, the second one can be an analytical method and third numerical. Experimental method in simple words, I told you, right, by pouring the one liter milk inside the cup, and then I can check whether it is breaking or create a crack or overflowing uh, by doing it in a physical way. That is experimental. We all did our uh, HRP test um, and all the experimental tests, whatever we come across in the laboratory. But analytical method is something different. What we used to calculate with the help of formulas, predefined formulas, but it won't work in all the cases, right? So if I'm seeing the object for the first time, we don't have any existing formula for that. Then it will be a uh, difficult task for us to get to know the proper answer for it. Where numerical comes to picture, numerical methodology comes to picture is all about, you will be putting it with the help of an uh, solvers, which means we have various solver which could uh, help to run the simulation and it will give me the data directly. Okay. That will run on the three different, um, um, three major, major methodologies, function approach method and finite element method and finite difference method and finite volume method. Uh, in that functional approximate method, we have learned with, a, a, I guess, M1, M2, M3, M4 paper and all. And finite element method is the one which I told you now, finite difference method and finite volume method is purely for the CFT people. Okay. So now the steps in FEA, uh, it, it is very common for all the object guys, not only for this object, it's common for all the object. Uh, in what way? So first step, there will be an uh, evaluation or kind of uh, an analysis which we used to do for then uh, understand the problem. So if I'm saying like a coffee mug will be the problem, means first you need to understand like what is the basic requirement of the coffee mug? Why, how I'm using it? Okay, where it's going to be uh, hanged or it's going to be rest in a portion on a table or not. So those kind of basic physics we need to understand before creating any component. Next pre-processing. The thing, whatever we did in our uh, meshing that we used to call it as a pre-processing zone. And the solution part uh, we'll discuss in like in the last portion. Post-processing is something like where our system will give me a data which I couldn't able to read it. The post-processor alone can able to read it. The solver will give you, give me a data in a uh, non-human readable language, which is very quite uh, difficult to understand the language. That's when post-processing solvers will come to picture. Those post-processing solvers will make it an easy way where it will become purely animated zone. I can easily get to know uh, what is happening for the 
model. So the basic steps in uh, finite element analysis is all about uh, first step, discretization the structure. We discuss like splitting the car into small small pieces, and selection of interpolation function for each and individual element. We'll be having an own way of solving methodology. That we need to define it. And formation of element stiffness matrix and load vectors where that element is supposed to behave in which way that we need to define it. And then the formation of global stiffness matrix and load vectors, it's supposed to be happening in a global way. Not only one element I'm, I'm not going to solve, I'm going to solve for the entire domain. So globally, I need to correlate all the stiffness matrix value. Further than incorporation of the boundary condition, you can again back to the topic, sorry, again, take an example of the coffee mug where that's supposed to be uh, holding or uh, in the handles alone, or you're going to hold it in the bottom of the coffee mug, or you're going to uh, like uh, uh, catch the uh, rim of the coffee mug. So those things we need to define it. And solution of the simultaneous equation, right after computing all your boundary conditions, stiffness matrix, load vectors, it will give an each and individual equation for all the elements. And calculating the element and strain and stress that the post processing will take care of it. Interpretation of the results obtained that we need to analyze it, whether we need to say the materials value will sustain that load or not. That's how the steps will be happening inside your CA simulations. Significance of an CA, um, it, it may be like uh, in all the field, I'm, uh, I'm not focusing only on the automobile field, let's take a common field, okay, even in a civil also, okay, even in manufacturing zone also. So everywhere, um, you can you can see that it has like a um, role of an CA engineer. So it, they will give an exact, uh, not exact or approximated value uh, of the system, whatever you are working as like how it's going to behave when I'm going to put the model in its real life. Okay. So instead of not creating, I mean, uh, making a prototype or spending much cost on the manufacturing se sector, CA people will uh, approximately give you uh, at most correct answers in all the situations where and which the input to run any simulation, if it's not been proper, then that time you can feel like some uh, updation supposed to happen and some revision of your uh, existing data might be uh, like revi revised in a better way. Those areas alone, our answers may slightly deviate from its real case. Okay. And um, majority people uh, so far, like uh, in any many startups, you, you can see like uh, people have started to use their um, CA softwares where in which they just want to uh, ensure the results are getting um, in line with the physical test or not. So in majority companies also like they have uh, own, they have own space for the R&D department where people are used to work in the design part, design team as well as like analysis field where they'll approve the model before they getting its manufactured. So here one of the like uh, major forming companies you can see and uh, mold flow simulation using mold flow separate software we have. If it is a forming simulation, we have that too separately and all your uh, cars whatever we have been used they are rated right based on some standards your cap or Bharat and cap so those kind of variety standards are there to ensure your car safety in all the perspective not only the frontal crash we are just uh, showing you an example of a frontal crash but in all the perspective side crash roof roll and head impact test all your pedestrian impact test uh, seat belt uh, locker system and uh, your uh, dummy positioning inside your car with this they will be doing enormous amount of tests and then be evaluating your car is good to go for your passenger driving or it's supposed to need it needs an, uh, another alternative uh, idea to ensure the safety of other passengers as well so aircraft industries also they do have an uh, a private space where they'll be doing this analysis privately. I mean, and additionally, they will check for that um, live test as well. So the major classification of analysis, uh, where do we have um, as this non-linear and linear, I told you. On top of it, we have a static and dynamic, where the simple example is all about if you're handling any static object where there is no um, change in uh, force is going to be there, constant uh, time, and then it will come under the static analysis. In that case, uh, linear static and nonlinear static will be two classification depends on the material contact and boundary conditions. It will change and types of analysis in dynamic way where your force is getting changed based on time. Then that also it will be and uh, two different classification: linear dynamic analysis and nonlinear dynamic analysis. First, the the type of analysis are majorly static and dynamic. Then it will get further subdivided into linear and nonlinear. Okay, so. 
we'll see that example then you can easily understand that and correlate things linear analysis is an analysis that takes place with a model in elastic zone so there won't be any non linearity in the model it will behave as like uh, how we are expanding your uh, rubbers or uh, you can take your uh, chewing gums example so up to some extent if you are leaving it it will get back its original position right that is a linear zone of the model where there is no change or uh, non countered actions won't be taken care of over there if the model goes beyond its sale point then directly the material starts to break okay the solver uh, also will flow the straight line uh, that's a ideal case actually uh, its solver will used to think the model will behave in its elastic zone means according to the solver it will take only the straight line even if there is a lag or slight changes in your uh, linear zone also it won't be taken as a consideration you may ask why the solver is giving approximate result not the real result this is the answer for it actually the solver also will compute in the linear zone only but it will take it as a very straight line in natural case uh, it won't be there it don't be like that it won't be a perfect straight line it will have a, a like a linearity on its own nature non linearity on its own nature so when we are uh, studying thermal dynamics i mean thermal dynamics and the thermal engineering paper we used to uh, assume some ideal conditions right however our engine won't be like performing in the same way but we used to consider it as an ideal engine that's how some consider considerability will be there in the solver side also that's when the result will be uh, close to your approximated value and non linear analysis again it's going to be classified into um, three major classification geometric uh, material and uh, contact non linearity geometric non linearity um, take an example of your um, cotton box okay that it has an own ideal shape but when you are pushing it to some extent right it is changing its own uh, size and size but not making any changes in the material nature okay material non linearity um any any material which is working under non linear zone you can take even steel also you can take if you are pulling it pushing it um, towards a wall up, up to some extent it starts to behave it's a non linear zone right it will uh, squeeze on squeeze can uh, squeezing on the wall means that definitely it will uh, go i mean touch it's a non linear zone where it where you can able to feel the material non linearity contact linearity even in your uh, gear box okay both materials i mean both gear and pinion are made up on the same material now when it is keep on contacting for prolonged period of time it starts to erode okay that has comes in a non technical linearity so beyond elastic limit uh, again material linearity classified into three types beyond elastic limit and uh, within elastic limit and uh, creep deformation to do constant load this major classification is based on purely the material okay and non linear analysis the best example where we could able to see is all about car crashing where all the materials non linear phase will be like exposed okay the base to three classifications are geometric non linearity and material and contact are three will happen i mean the both three will happen uh, in its car crash itself that's why we called this frontal crash as a uh, beautiful example for to explain you the non linearity because the geometry is why is the car is getting deformed material why is all the short gun or rails or bumper are moving to its non linear zone contact non linearity why is the material having a proper contact but that makes the car to get deformed in a regular pattern correct we can't predict uh, like uh, one side of the car alone will get uh, compressed another side will be sustaining the same shape and size and uh, it won't get easily deformed we can't like predict the way right but how people are like uh, evaluating the cars uh, uh, frontal crash analysis is all about because of the sensors and they know the standard value if my car is traveling at the 35 km per hour and uh, facing some obstacle in the road when it is hitting in that particular point certain degree how it will get deformed that we can easily predict from the central crash itself okay again again like a small uh, pool so far meshing uh, before touching the meshing topic uh, are we um, good to go for that are you guys are clear with that balaji like i'll come back to the question of yours uh, in the last part uh, that may take some time to explain so super nice and thanks for the response guys we'll move to the machine so finite element method uh, reduce the degrees of freedom uh, now we'll come to the technical part uh, the degrees of freedom from infinite to finite with the help of a discretization or uh, meshing so that infinite 
uh, you need to remember the topic which we discussed uh, dots dots uh, continuous dots made the line and continuous line made the surface right so here the infinity point refers the infinite amount of dots the finite is referring the countable number of nodes and elements okay that's when like these two uh, uh, words are coming to picture and uh, the, one of the purpose of uh, meshing is to actually make the problem solvable uh, using the finite element which makes sense uh, when we are uh, dealing with an uh, old image so there we could able to relate the irregular object and we made it as in a finite numbered node and element which we could able to solve it in a better way okay that's when we are breaking this entire uh, mesh strip model into small small pieces which represent the exact model okay after meshing the car should looks as a car how it's in the cat it should not look in a different way right that that's the only part we need to ensure it the features whatever we do have in the cat that's supposed to be very similar there should not be any deviation in the mesh to model because we are imitating the cat model right and uh, how we need to choose the mesh so everyone knows like we need to do the meshing okay fine then how we could able to select which type of mesh i need to provide and what is the size of element i need to provide for the cad model so those how they are defining it in very simple term there are three major uh, like check process you need to ensure before start meshing one is like size and shape of the model which means uh, is a car is uh, small or is it a sedan type or a hatchback type or suv type what is it we need to check the size of the car and second analysis type what kind of analysis i'm going to provide i mean i'm going to do on the car frontal crash analysis or any kind of um, uh, drift or rollover such kind of things i'm going to provide it i mean perform it that i need to check and then how long it takes for me to mesh the car so as a single person it will take for sure like a 3 to 4 months entirely to mesh the entire car so if it as a team of people then it will get reduced the duration will get reduced based on that i need to choose which type of mesh and what kind of element i'm going to use on the a uh, model to get meshed easily so significance of mesh where it's going to helpful here you can see like entire uh, elephant elephant 2d is completely meshed with the tra so in that case um, i can even like mesh the same um, outline 2d 2d outline with the help of an quads also i can go with the 3d elements also if it is an uh, 3d 3d object so how it is getting choose uh, in which way that you can correlate the three patterns what we have discussed I mean what we have come across so far size and shape of the model analysis type what i'm going to provide it and time how they are providing me how much they are providing me to complete the mesh okay with that you could able to understand uh, what kind of mesh i'm going to use this process so completely breaking down the uh, whole object into small small pieces which is making me to uh, understand the model easily and then it will gives the data in very clear picture mode okay we'll put on a quick example <coughs> so um the front portion alone of the car if i'm having in this such a way okay so some mesh is not been proper over here okay some uh, i'm putting an coarse mesh over here here i'm putting a small 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 mesh over here okay we'll separate this two region this is left side this is the right side if something is happen in this area okay when the wall uh, hits the particular portion of the car and obviously the force will get transferred to the second zone also from the right left side to the right side okay here keep in mind that i mesh the entire model into very fine mesh very fine mesh mean proper mesh there is no, no nothing like uh, contract to be here so this is perfect mesh perfect mesh area this area is imperfect mesh area okay now question to the students like uh, which side i'll be getting a proper result left or right most of the people are saying correct right right part but the first contact object of my entire car is the left side portion if that is not properly communicating the force or transmitting the force what has happened in the first instance then the second part is also is useless okay which means the entire uh, uh, simulation result falls on the hands of a machine engineer now you know the uh, like uh, seriousness of the machine engineer 
in your industry definitely you will be exposed to uh, work on the mesh for quite a, a long period of time where you will be uh, knowing a lot of things it may feels like uh, it may sounds like very awkward or uh, any uh, uh, uncomfortable for you to work on the mesh for the entire day but that is going to be in a real um, learning phase where you could able to understand the uh, importance of your role when you are going for the solver side or post processing side the more amount of uh, time you are spending on the meshing area the more you will learn because he, like uh, after knowing this a much, much part you are saying like uh, right portion will give good result and left portion will give bad result now if you are an uh, become an uh, meshing engineer if you are in a portion to mesh the entire car you you will be like uh, working in a super uh, excellent way you know the seriousness where it's going to affect how it's going to affect the real life of the people so you will be uh, prone to work in a, a better way okay so make sure the work in a, as a machine engineer whatever you are doing it's supposed to be proper it should maintain the quality whatever you are solver solving engineer set it for you okay now back to the topic uh, boundary conditions so you may ask like the second important thing as an uh, ce guy you supposed to know is all about uh, boundary conditions a simple task uh, again is going to be an interesting one so you have uh, okay let me max let me put a um, button okay it may not look like a button sorry for that uh, we'll take an example of yes this is the button which you have in your keyboard okay tell me like uh, what is the uh, movement of this button which means i'll define an uh, six degrees of you know like uh, six degrees of freedoms are there for every object in the world okay uh, let me define that uh, a object can rotate in this way an object can rotate in this way an object can rotate in this way as well okay and it can move in this direction and it can uh, move in this direction and it can move in this direction all six uh, ways are there all six ways are there right now like let me know uh, for a button keyboard button this is a keyboard button guys okay, keyboard button so in what all the ways the keyboard button can move oh sorry let me define you the direction as well x y z i'm not speaking about the negative uh, directions and all only like uh, straight forward movement clockwise direction movement perfect if it's your laptop what will be the movement for the screen only the screen the same same uh, same degrees of freedom the same axis applicable for this laptop as well nice it seems like you guys are expert in c nice nice assets perfect yes getting all good answers yeah so uh, if you have a very clear idea about boundary condition then all are well and good much appreciated for your answers so one thing i just want to uh, say to you all is all about uh, first understand the nature of this product how it's working when it is uh, when it is given to you in the ha- in your hands if i'm having my laptop definitely i'll be viewing it and then i'll be closing it in this way which is going to rotate clockwise in my uh, y axis right for my laptop this is the only like uh, for laptop screen this is the only uh, actionary item or mobile way when it is going to the button uh, it's supposed to move either in uh, downwards uh, x or upwards x only x x linear value when it is coming to mouse then again it's going to be quite difficult task we need to define the planar motion which means uh, it can y it can go in y it can go in z and it can um, use i mean rotate along x axis right so for a mouse for a button for a laptop itself degrees of freedom is this much getting complicated then imagine a case of an uh, automobile so everywhere like we are taking a simple example then we are going to the automobile only because majority people are like now from the mechanical background and they are prone to work with automobiles they need to work on the automobiles that's why i made it in a very clear picture for you to understand the better boundary condition so 
this is like again, again uh, the person who, who have learned this bounty condition and uh, again uh, you guys will be easily working with the uh, contracts and modelings and that is easy for you to uh, get adapt for it because uh, still now like people in the industry few industries are not aware of like uh, what is uh, what is maybe exactly the bounty condition if you are aware of it means then you are like good to go for that majorly there will be two classifications of bounty condition one is like essential bounty condition and another one is non essential bounty condition the word uh, states it's very clearly what is essential and what is non essential uh, if you are taking this uh, like beam as an example we we'll limited the beam over here okay the beam is suspended and the load is being given over here the first uh, boundary condition will be given over here as essential boundary condition okay and the second one is all about the non essential boundary condition why they named in the way i want to arrest this beam or i want to imitate this beam okay in my solver i can easily create a cuboid and then i can say like this is beam solver will understand okay yeah this is beam only what do you want to do in that now i need to say hey solver like uh, just hold this beam uh, in a uh, vertical manner i need to harass this beam in the roof then i need to provide you the load then i need to check how much elongation or uh, deformation the beam is prone to okay so for that i need to first fix the beam right then only i can able to uh, put the load over here without fixing the beam if i'm putting the load the beam will like it won't elongate still it will start to move in a downwards direction that's how the beam will behave according to solver because i am not saying the solver to hold the beam the thing whichever you are saying to the solver very mandatorily that will comes in a residential boundary condition the thing even like if i'm not putting the load also solver will run solver will simply keep the beam as it is without putting any loads on it it will still give the data uh what data it can give right this beams ideal condition what is the length say for example 100 mm after running the simulation also it will give it will say like the um, length of the beam is 100 mm it won't say like uh, it is uh, elongated to some some extent 10 mm extra so finally it is elongated to 10, 110 mm it won't say like that it will say only 100 mm but if i'm not putting any load condition the simulation won't run because of uh, lacking boundary condition so that is something which is very essential to run the simulation is called essential boundary condition right so i hope now you got a clear idea about what is essential boundary condition what is not essential boundary condition even we don't need the ppt as well we'll quickly jump to the software topic uh, i mean software demo before touching with the software demo if you have any questions you can post it right now then i'll like uh, if at all possible i'll try to ex a I mean a i'll uh, give you an example in the software part itself any questions guys quickly okay uh difference between finite element analysis fe and ce again ce fea is a method to solve an uh, problem actually i'm not sure with uh, your name sad i guess um it's a method to solve any complex geometrical problem ce is computer aided engineering the way how we are solving with the help of fea we used to call it as a globally ce uh it 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 include like uh, the guy who is creating the model it it includes the guy who is analyzing the model as well in ce can we work as a machine engineer only yes you can work but uh, over a period like uh, you will get to know um, much more advanced uh, solving techniques and definitely the company who is like hiring you they won't keep you as a machine engineer they will promote you for sure what are the softwares available in the market for each step so we are like using hypermesh for hypermesh and ansa for preprocessing and uh, for solving purpose uh, we can use uh, radios or lsdna or ansa's workbench even like in market um, majorly these softwares alone is getting used if at all like you are very much interested yes after learning this as a basic level understanding you can go for the solvers comparatively with uh, other solvers this is very easy to understand 
I guess Alan, I asked you to answer the question. Do machine engineers keep working on mesh all day? Definitely, yes. You will also expose to work with contract modeling, material modeling, properties, and all. But that is a later period. For the first at least of one month, you'll be prone to work with uh, only meshing zone. Uh, Ashwin, I, I'm reading your question. Uh, which is followed by most of the companies in India? Uh, which one you are saying exactly? Could you refine, reframe your questions? If it is a ductile material, um, yes, we need to go for that. Minimum system requirement to run which software, Ashwin? Software, most of the companies. Yeah, you can so go with the answer. Certain materials up to which such proportional limit we could able to easily identify its nature if it is under linear zone. If it is going beyond linear zone, we need to check even it is breaking point till. System requirement for meshing, you can have like a decent 4GP or 8GP RAM with a 2GP graphic card is more than suffice to run this hyper mesh easily. Any other questions guys? Shall we book into uh, pitch into that uh, software part? Are these softwares package uh, are available for students on free basis? It depends on software actually, Ashwin. If you are using uh, student version, um, Hypermesh will be a better one. You can get into that. And which software is useful nowadays? Uh, first, uh, I would prefer you to learn with Hypermesh and Ansa because those are the two basic softwares to learn uh, Hypermesh and uh, to learn meshing easily. Right after learning that, um, even companies are ready to like hire you and then they will train you in their own customized software. Uh, where to find internship opportunities in CAD and CAE? Uh, I guess Mehul will like, explain you these things in quite a while. LS Deep Mesh Work, a good preprocessor. I would recommend you to go first understand the mesh. Then after like uh, getting to know what is um, uh, best thing in your uh, meshing zone, then you can go with other, so other meshing softwares. In that way, uh, you not only mesh works, other, other things are there, 2D mesh is there, other so meshing software is also there. Answers okay for uh, what channel? I'm not getting your question. Could you elaborate a bit? SimScale as model based software. Uh, again, that's a different case. And I'm not, again, like I uh, want to confuse you guys. Like, let me be in the pre processing, solving, and uh, post processing zone itself. Is Answers good software for FEA? Definitely, yes. That could able to do all three things, meaning pre processing, solving, and post processing. Uh, wherein which a pre-processing will be responsible for the missing zone and um, solver where you could able to set up the boundary condition, materials, contacts and all. Um, okay, uh, one one thing I just missed uh, you to elaborate is all about um, contacts. So as a uh, human, like uh, we were, um, we, we can easily sense the things, right? Uh, if my hands are, uh, okay, sorry. If my hands is there and I want to uh, touch anything, okay, um, like any uh, water bottle or any object, okay. So I could be able to know like what is the object I'm touching, even if it is chocolate or something like that. Uh, how like uh, the temperature uh, or the material is hard or soft, I can able to sense it easily, okay, with the help of sensory organs. But how a solver will comes to know what the object is interacting. Okay, so say for example, uh, the beam uh, bolted in such a way in its one end. Okay, and another end, I'm like putting a load and then I'm making the, or I'm 
dropping a brick on one one end of the beam okay obviously the attached beam will starts to deform for some days sometime and then it may get regain to a social portion based on the materials of the beam i'm not saying i'm not going to the material of the beam i'm just saying like uh, it will bend for some time until it will go back to regain i mean original portion in a solver also it will begin the same way but my question is all about how the solver knows first object is having intersection with the second object the touch or the feel how it is getting as a human you are getting because of your sensory organ as a software how it is getting know that some object is touching another one that will comes under contacts okay it's a vast topic again for your understanding i make it very simple so in in your car like n number of components are there okay so we'll take only the bumper and then the front guards and front rails something like that okay when that particular uh, um, force is being transmitted to the bumper after absorbing some amount of force with the help of crash box and some other uh, crushing zone we used to call this a crumbling zone so after some crumbling zone the next impact it will transfer in the form of waves then the guy who is sitting over here will experience a shock not an like electric electrified shock i'm just saying it as an impact shock okay that's when your seat belt will arrest you to sit in that position it won't like allow you to get to the dashboard okay that impact force if you could able to bear it and if you are uh, like predicting the values or if you are very tight firm tightly firmed with the seats you are safe if it is not or you are not wearing the seat belt that's when you are uh, like exposed to the dashboard and your head will get injured for sure so this contact force where how it is going to helpful for me in simulation that bumper will absorb the force and then it will transmit say for example 100 kN force the bumper is absorbing when it is going to the rail the two rails on a pillars and roof and then b pillar okay that 100 kN directly it won't get uh, be transmitted it will get reduced to 90 over here in your a pillar it will go to 70 and then your b pillar will receive 40 so this amount of force is getting drastically reduced when it is reaching your passenger all our mechanical field people or analysis people field people they just working on the areas to reduce it to a safe value where the passenger who is sitting inside the car should not get harm of harm out of it okay when i am putting the best material uh, in this zone itself i mean the crumbling zone itself my all impact force if it is getting properly absorbed then it is very safe for the person who is sitting in the occupancy that's when contact will comes to the picture if the contact is not been properly defined the person uh, who is analyzing this entire simulation can't give a proper result data is contact clear to you all yes good question um uh, if it is a short way length vehicle uh, sir definitely there will be a certain uh, safety parameters they need to pass before they getting launch the car unless and until it's not your go kart yes it's safe because in our go kart like uh, majority of people uh, we don't have a uh, proper uh, shock absorbing systems or safety measures it's just done for a avt vehicle right so we can't like expose that much uh, higher speed or you should not reach that much the higher uh, like driving a zone on that particular car So passenger car they will have certain standards they should uh, adapt to that then only the car will get released tata punch you can take like it's getting uh, five star or four star ratings right how because of uh, they are giving their stars it's all like based on the standards how they are meeting up if any uh, any areas or um, any values if they are not achievable in their uh, test on road test definitely they are not going to provide you uh, that particular uh, standards Yes, I guess. Ah, uh, that's it. We'll jump back to the software topic. Okay, one last question. Uh, Albin, uh, you asked me something. Can connections be do while meshing act as a contact? Definitely, contacts. Ah, uh, if you're providing on top of it, connections also will be the second first second stage after meshing. You'll be providing connections. Without connections, after providing contacts also. Ah, uh, it it is not making much uh, effect of it. If two um. slabs are connected with a bolt 
if you are providing contact for the two slabs, the bolt is not been there means there is no point in providing the connections over there, the contacts over there. It's useless. It's not fulfilling your uh, results. All uh, proper connections, whatever they have done in your CAD model, if it is in a welded joint or bolted or seam weld, whatever it may be uh, provided on that, that's supposed to be imitated in your uh, CA model as well, which means CAD FE model as well. We'll, we'll uh, jump back to the topic of your uh, software part. Let me share from my another screen. <laughs> Would you be able to see the uh, uh, hype mesh window? Yes, Sakti. Perfect. So uh, this is the one which I uh, informed you guys uh, regarding your frontal crash model. So this is an uh, Dodge Neon model. Again, it's a reduced version. Uh, for a student version, I just made it in a lighter way. I've reduced almost uh, maximum parts, which is um, engine decks and dashboards, all your um, important doors, front electrical ECU components, and your brake pedals, all uh, major important things. I've just reduced it to showcase you how this car will like uh, perform when it is going for the frontal class test. Okay. So again, uh, this is this standard uh, is based on a frontal motor vehicle safety standard. We are going to perform this uh, frontal crash for this car. So in the left side, you could be able to see a lot of options, right? Uh, these options is all about, uh, we have insisted uh, accelerometer for this car and the assembly part is nothing but like each and individual color represent each and individual components. If all together, you could be able to see as a assembled model. That's how shop floor will work, right? Each and individual uh, sector people will produce one component. It will come to the assembly chain where all the engineers will work together to integrate the components as a complete assembly. And the cards, you may ask why the cards are there. This is a solver language. Again, like once you have entered into the course, you will get to know what is those things and all. Component level, if you want to view it, means you could be able to see each and individual components. And cross section is something like uh, if any, uh, let me try to annotate it. Okay, yeah, I can annotate it. So, but I can still say the things to you. As I said, like uh, the 90 impact force, whatever it's absorbed or 100 impact force, whatever absorbed in the boundary, sorry, bumper, it may not be exactly transferred to the uh, A pillar. A pillar is something like this is A pillar guys, okay? Right after your mirror, right? Uh, there is some portion which is vertical, uh, slightly inclined, right? This is called A pillar, this is called B pillar, okay? Uh, it cannot be transmitted the same way as uh, how the bumper is absorbing. Bumper is absorbing 100 uh, kilometer uh, force means when it is going to A pillar, it may be 60, 70 like that. Because all this material, whatever present in this rails, uh, sorry, shotguns and rails will absorb some uh, Newton of force. Okay. And uh, curves, which is important for the uh, which material to uh, know how to behave. And uh, engine files, which is again a mandatory file to run the simulation. Uh, groups is nothing but the contacts, the self-contact, which I've which I've told you like a previous uh, way. And load collectors, uh, again, uh, in which way the car needs to uh, move. It cannot be a movement, guys. Like it can uh, rotate or uh, it can revolve. A uh, rollover test also you can provide those can, those things. Uh, whatever you want the car to do, that will comes in the load collector. Material very evident. Output blocks. Uh, what do you want to see from the simulation that you can give it over here. And parts, part wise, each and individual part wise, you can list it over here. Plots. What kind of plots you want to look out? Properties of the cars and rigid wall. Okay, this might be. It's, it's a kind of deck setup, guys. Like uh, I can't uh, bring, uh, I can't construct a wall over here, right? Instead, what I will do, I'll take the wall, which is predefined by the radios, okay? And then sets is nothing but um, the group of uh, components or elements, which is organized in one structure area. We used to call it a set. And solver mass, uh, it's a dummy car, right? Uh, we don't have a proper uh, weight for this car. To add an artificial weight, what we used to do is, we'll be keeping the original weight of rail. If you are holding the rail in your hand, how much weight the rails will have. The same weight I'll be giving to the rails as well. Okay. And finally, uh, system collections, uh, system collectors will have the... Uh, global local coordinate system this is global coordinate system it's nothing but like xyz value okay the same thing i can keep it for the individual uh, components as well that's what it is and title very evident like the name just the title of the car which we are working for it now it is perfectly set up for the uh, simulation guys okay so i'm not setting it in an individual way that's why i explained to you all the stuff what has been there uh, we set it up the entire car now it's good for the simulation after running the simulation, uh, again, it will take hardly uh, like one or two hours to run the simulation. I just show you the simulated model. Um, 
again the simulation runtime on all it depends on the pc specifications okay now we'll see like uh, if the model has been computed after computing we got the result now the result will be in the form of non human readable language which is in dot hdd file format you could able to see where i'm pointing my mouse okay sorry i guess uh, i'm sharing like mesh window i'm not sharing a post processing window sorry this is post processor coming back to the point again like uh, this is a post process result data where i have solved the model uh, for two and a half hours and then i have bringing this model in the fatan of dot hdd file i guess i you could able to see where i'm pointing the mouse right so this is dot hdd file format uh, uh, which is non human readable only post processor could able to read this thing okay i imported this thing and then i am like showing you how the simulation will be so when it is moving like you can able to see how the car is getting crashed on it okay so if i'm doing that then definitely it won't be a uh, safe journey for the guy who is sitting inside the car right now it's time for us to optimize the uh, window and make it in a clear way how we could able to make the car is safe this is traveling in 35 miles per hour okay to have a clear picture what we can do i'll just uh, hide the wall and then i'll show you how the bumper is behaving bumper directly like hitting the crash box then it is going to the rails then it is going to the shock shock guns and absorbing towers finally it's reaching the dashboard and then the brake pedals how it is getting dented you can see that right so this is how if it is been getting happened then just imagine about the case of the guy who is sitting inside the car so we should make sure like uh, the person uh, as well as like uh, the occupants who were sitting in the car they should be safe the one versus stress value you can easily uh, very very helpful to understand like uh, how much uh, value the material could sustain if it's working in a good safe zone or not that we could able to easily identify from this value itself okay and uh, to get into in a, a data wise manner instead of uh, having in a pictorial pictorial representation we do have another option called hypergraph 2d if you are changing that particular portion as an hypergraph 2d you would able to understand that in a, a data wise manner not in a pictorial representation in a data wise manner so this i can like call you t01 file this is again a different file which could help you to understand while you are working on the post processor i'll just ask only the internal kinetic and the total energy so excuse me some minute it is loading so this plot will helps me to understand like uh, where is my car exactly getting affected more and where it's uh, get, getting bounced back and how the energy is getting dissipated is it anywhere or less has been uh, evolved i mean uh, spotted or not those kind of information i could able to easily get it um, by plotting the graph itself so we know that uh, if i'm if my car is running or uh, dashing in this zone uh, what is happening to my car over here so at what point which value is getting peak and what value is getting reduced that i can easily say, see from this graph itself always always uh, the, you know all the rules is all about energy can be created or destroyed it can transform from one form to another form right so my uh, kinetic energy of the car is getting converted into internal energy then finally at one point is coming to rest right so the car is proposed or projected in the mile 35 miles per hour after dashing the wall it is coming to rest okay how it's coming to rest by by giving all its kinetic energy to the wall and getting converted into internal energy that's when it is coming to rest so all the car crash whatever you guys are seeing in the movies or in in some people may seen in the real real scenarios as well or some people might be seeing in youtube such a car test i mean car physical testing evaluations so those are you can see like at one point it comes to rest even though it is bounce backing to some extent or 10 mm to 20 mm it will come to position of rest after like giving all its uh, kinetic energy okay was it clear to you all is there any questions so now you got an idea about like pre processing solving and post processing right so if at all like any questions you do you have uh, you can ask me now 
So the content from my side, I as a CA simulation, very basic level. I guess you got to know 